a frequency analyzer and let's see if I can if you can see my little hand there. Um, the butt end, there's a collet where you can clamp the uh, the butt end, and then over on the uh, near the head, there might be a box or some sort of sensor that if you take the club head and pluck it so it oscillates back and forth, the um, the unit will detect how many cycles per minute. The higher the cycles per minute, the stiffer the shaft is said to be. Now we should note that not all deflection boards and frequency analyzer readings will be the same. The reason why is there's no standards. Some deflection boards may come equipped with a six pound weight, others a seven pound weight. Frequency analyzers, uh, the shaft may be, or, or club may be clamped at three inches, five inches, or seven inches. So without knowing what those dimensions are, the, the other numbers are kind of meaningless. This chart's based on the measurement of assembled drivers and five irons. So this takes into account the tip trimming on the shafts and any differences in the raw lengths of the shafts as well. The thing to take away from this chart is that one, the difference on average between adjacent flexes, and that's, that means from L to A, A to R, and so forth, is not consistent. But on average, it's approximately 10 CPMs between flexes. Secondly, the frequencies of steel and graphite shafts, on average, aren't the same with the same letter designations. The two shaft materials should be treated as apples and oranges. We don't have enough time today, but shafts of the same material but entirely different weights shouldn't be compared to one another in terms of deflection or frequency either. But just take a look at this for a second. If we take a look at the, the steel um, shafts for drivers, and those are graphite. The graphite is about the same, if not a little bit more flexible than the steel on average. However, if we come down to the five irons, we see just the complete opposite. The, um, the, the graphite is much more flexible than what the uh, steel shafts are under the same given uh, flex uh, designation by about 20 cycles per minute. Part of this is that five iron, graphite shaft at five irons are normally a little bit longer, but so too are drivers with graphite shafts. They're made longer than the steel shafts. Okay, if you could see my next screen of assembled club frequencies. This is based on all the testing that we've done. Um, over all these years. Um, but averages are made up of what? They're made up of the highs, the lows, and everything in between. The differences in assembled club frequencies of, uh, of identical flex, length, and swing weights can be quite considerable, as you can see from this chart. Remember what we said earlier, 10 CPMs is generally considered one full flex. So let's take a look at um, under the X-Flex graphite. For example, the lowest frequency of uh, one, per one particular shaft measured 246. A completely other, or an, another shaft that we tested, and quite possibly by another manufacturer, it measured 309 CPMs, a 63 CPM difference. That would be equivalent to about six full flexes. Now remember, there's only five flexes listed. So you can tell that these two shafts, even though they're listed as X-Flex, probably are going to feel quite different. The other thing to take a look at is this 246 CPMs could actually, if you, if you look at the ranges here from high to low, could fall between the S-Flex and, uh, and, and the stiff flex, could fall within the R-Flex, could fall within the A-Flex, even the L-Flex, where we see a, a range from 204 to 272 cycles per minute. Um, obviously, the X-Flex is not designed to be 
as or, or more flexible than a L flex shaft, but that's what we found. Part of this explanation um, in these ranges are what makes the shafts different from one another. That's that's pretty important to understand. So in the end, the generic letter, letter designation like L, A, R, or whatever tells us very little. Okay. There's a sorry for the delay here. There's a pause when I switch screens here. Okay, the next thing we're going to talk about is the stiffness distribution of the shaft. Um, you've probably heard these names, uh, bend point and kick point, used before. Well, bend point is a candle or a compressive test where the butt and the tip are compressed inward, which makes the shaft bend. The point of maximum bending is called the bend point. Now, the bend point occurs approximately 40% from the tip of the shaft in a very, very narrow range. When I say narrow range, it's usually within one and a half inches of one another. Kick point, on the other hand, is slightly different test. These are not um, synonymous terms. The butt end is clamped, whereas the um, a weight is hung from the tip, just like a deflection board. And it's also along the lines of what you see in a golf swing, where imagine their hands are on the butt end of the shaft, and the head is being flexed, or is flexing the shaft. The point of maximum bending occurs in this um, uh, test approximately 45% up the way, or from the tip of the shaft. And that's pretty normal. Um, none we've ever found have been past 50%. Um, of the shaft. So you can see how little of a difference there is. It should be noted that the point of maximum be bending, whether it's bend point or kick point, is the same no matter where the f or what the force is. Only the amplitude or the amount of curvature changes. So shaft said to have multiple bend or kick points depending on how hard you swing is quite impossible. Now the last method of measuring shaft or stiffness distribution is through EI curves or en energy inertia curves. This is a three point bending test that measures the load of the shaft inch by inch. And the, uh, the computer, uh, well, uh, the information is fed to computer, where then it uh, plots the, the uh, amount of deflections, and you're able to compare one shaft to another side by side. It's, it's uh, again, fairly recent development that they use in uh, shaft testing.